What do the Beatles, William Shakespeare, Florence Nightingale, Andrew Levy, Magna Carta and Leonardo da Vinci have in common? You may have guessed correctly. You can see them all on display here in the British Library's Treasures Gallery. Today I'm going to give you a little guided tour around that gallery, pointing out some of the great books, manuscripts and documents we have on display. Here we are in front of one of our most recent acquisitions. It's the archive of the award-winning novelist Andrew Levy. And on display here, we have items including her fantastic working draft of Small Island, the novel that won the Orange Prize in 2004. It's also named the Whitbread Book of the Year. And you can see the handwritten, you can see the changes that she makes and also on display here, we have her own screenplay of The Long Song. Her archive, her papers, her sound recordings have been presented to the British Library. We have some of them on display here and future times you're going to be able to read them and consult them in our reading rooms. So now I'm standing in front of one of the most famous books in the world. Here is the first folio of the plays of William Shakespeare. This book was published in 1623, seven years after Shakespeare died, and it was the first time that all his plays were gathered together in one book. What we're really excited about in this display and across the Treasures Gallery is that we are showcasing far more works which are written by women. So, for example, in this display about women and Shakespeare, there's a real focus on plays which were performed by women, including actors such as Vivian Lee. Next to me is the writing desk of a famous novelist, Jane Austen. Now, this was presented to her by her father in 1794, and if you look at it very carefully, there's a little drawer where she could keep her pens and an ink pot, and placed on top of her writing desk is a letter that she herself wrote to her brother Frank, congratulating him on the birth of his son. This year is the 200th anniversary of the birth of Florence Nightingale. And on display in our Treasures Gallery, we have her own diagram entitled Causes of Mortality in the Army in the East, which she herself drew in the Crimea in 1858. It's really important because it underlies her own scientific research. And this diagram also paved the way for reforms in the sanitation of the British Army. So here I am standing in front of Magna Carta. Now, the more observant of you may have noticed that Magna Carta has actually been moved from its usual place in our Treasures Gallery. We've now positioned it with our historical documents which gives you more space. What actually is Magna Carta? It's one of the most significant and influential documents in the world. It was first issued by King John in 1215. It's a peace treaty between the king and his barons. And the British Library holds not one but two of the original manuscripts as issued by King John in 1215. And here is one of them. This particular copy was reputedly found in a London tailor shop in the 17th century. And you may ask, what was it doing there? Well, um, if it was indeed there, the likelihood is that it would have been chopped up. And so we suppose the parchment would have been used in order to line gentlemen's collars. You may notice that some things are different. First of all, we've established a one-way system around the gallery. And this is actually to ensure that everybody can go around safely and securely, maintaining social distancing, giving yourselves time and space to view our objects. We'd also ask for all the visitors to the gallery wear a face mask, unless you're otherwise exempt. I hope you enjoyed our tour. We're delighted to welcome you back. And if you'd like more information about planning your visit, 
please head to the British Library website.